right, everybody. We've got yet another very special returning guest this week. Everybody, welcome back to the show, Richard Fairgray. What's going hey, Richard. on, Richard? Oh, so good to be here. Oh, I love you to know, hear that. It's like coming home at this point. Is this my fifth <laughs> time? That's what we were wondering. It has yeah. to be fifth, fifth or sixth. Definitely more. Like you've been a yeah. Fifth or I know. Sixth. I I know we did. I know we did Black Sand Beach. Yeah, oh yeah, that's where it all began. That yeah. right. That's the, so Black Sand Beach was the first one, and then the second one would would have been like, uh I was still in LA for the second one, so it must have been like a Cardboardia or something. Did we talk about Cardboardia? I remember yes. Cardboardia. Cardboardia. Yep. Yep. Fuck that we, book, by the way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't need to talk about it ever again. All right. And so then, then we we definitely did Haunted Hill when it was first released online, and then we did Octopus. Yes. So yeah, this is yeah. this is the fifth one. The fifth, yeah, yeah. Because oh, I remember it. I I mean, you've you've we both been with each other for transitions in our life because I think the first interview you did with us, I was still living in Massachusetts, so it was over a few years ago now. Yeah, which, yeah. Well, it would have um, been it would have been like early COVID, right? Yeah, twenty nineteen, yep. I think. Yeah. Oh, really? That early? I think twenty, wow. yeah, early twenty twenty. Yeah, I, I'm sure it must have been. It must have been once COVID had hit. Wow. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember you won us over when you discussed your your possible side quest with the wizard on the streets of L.A. Okay, yeah, um, so, because that was two nights. No, that was the night before the first lockdown started. When that okay, happened. yeah, yeah. So I think it was during COVID, during yeah. the, you know, the beginnings of it. Oh yeah, and of course, and I was in my like weird like the the haunted house that I built for my yeah, wedding. Yeah, yes, yeah. the haunted um, house for your wedding in Canada. So it was like a few months yeah. into COVID. When, this is not interesting yeah. for anyone. No, it's, it's great. It's great for the listeners. I just <laughs> wanted to say this is what we're going to become. Like you know, when we do this podcast again with you in another like 10, 15 years, we're going to become like the group of old people that are sitting in like McDonald's having coffee, just trying to remember the last time we met each other. <laughs> Did you ever see the episode of um, Millennium where it's just the four demons having donuts? No, I'm no, because awesome. I have. <laughs> that show is amazing, and not just because I want to fuck Lance Henriksen, but because hey, that's all right. They would do these like weird little side jaunts, you know, kind of like how the X Files had that vampire episode that everyone thinks is good, but they only think it's good because it's such a relief right after the Peacock episode. Yes, um, right, exactly. But but there's this this episode where it's just these four demons who meet for donuts and coffee once a month or whatever, and they're all telling stories about how, like, everyone sees them as human, but they're clearly demons. From memory, I think one of them is the grandfather from Everybody Loves Raymond, but I could be getting that wrong, because I might just be, like, superimposing different old men onto different actors at this point in my life in the way that I always remember the newscaster from Gremlins 2 being Grandpa Munster, even though he's definitely not. He's just a different, sexy, elderly vampire. But um, everyone sees them as humans, except each other and so we as the viewers get to see them in their demon form and they're all telling stories about how frank black lance henriksen's character saw them for who they really were and they tell stories of like fun ways they've killed people and condemned them to hell and how this one guy keeps noticing that they're demons i love and that so we'll be like that except we yeah. aren't naked or pissing in anyone's coffee maker yeah. Well, oh, no, no, sorry, I got that wrong. That's really embarrassing. It's that they they're rude to the guy serving them coffee, and he pisses in their coffee, and they all enjoy that. Oh my god! What's I the name that. of the show? Millennium. It was a spinoff yeah. from the X Files. Really good. How have I never? Yeah, I've watched. never heard of this, so I've got it written down now. Yep, I'm a huge X Files fan. Once oh, I finish Ted I Lasso, I will look up, look it up. Yeah, I can't amazing. get into Ted Lasso. Everyone tells me I should like it, and they're like, but I don't like soccer. Yeah. Neither do I. I I am yeah. I'm very staunchly an American who just can't stand soccer. It's like in, in our DNA at this point. But uh All right. it's, it's All just right. a wonderful, beautiful show. And the fact we already talked about this on the show, but fuck it everybody, I'm gonna talk about it more. The <laughs> fact that they treated anxiety and depression in the second season the way they did really warmed my heart as somebody who suffered very deeply from it for most of his life. Real talk. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, see, now I feel bad for shitting on it. Yeah, you should. You should, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> I've That's just, like, good. noticed on, I don't know how, like, in frame it is, but I've noticed that it's just, like, a casual hammer sitting behind me. Yeah, um, I, it's a hammer on a radio, which, is it a ham radio? Is that what that means? Is it a joke? I don't, I don't know what you're going for, but I liked it. Remind well, me to stop. I think I have a sound effect for this, Mike. Yeah. Let me see if Hold I on. got it right. All right. Wow, there you go. There, there you, you go. go. Very good. Very good. Um, what's nice is like I've actually been looking for that hammer for a few days. 
So this this interview has already helped me. Even if I get no backers from this whole thing, this interview has already helped me find my hammer. We found your hammer. That's all. That's what we're here for. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> just so you just so you don't have to. You just look behind you mm-hmm. at one point. Mm-hmm. It, it is a room full of mirrors, is what you told us. So I don't know how that hasn't happened, but you're, well, you're too busy it, looking at yourself. It's, the, it. the thing is, like I've got the like the cameras at a slightly higher angle, so it's getting down on the hammer. Whereas when I'm looking uh, at the mirror in front of me, the hammer is just like. So okay. I, can see the, I mean, the yellow handle kind of gets merged with the yellow wall. It was a whole thing. Okay. I have this new, uh, very good goof that I do. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, you got to, like, keep your pranks fresh when you're married. Yeah. Uh, and, like, frankly, so Ray was getting kind of bothered by my usual thing, which is because he's such a nice person. If I drop something, his instinct is to pick it up for me. So I drop okay. things behind myself when I need to fart. And he started getting, <laughs> like, quite annoyed by I call it crop dusting, which I think is a good approach to yeah. life. Oh no. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So my new thing, my new thing is whenever now that we can go to stores again, now that we live in, you know, the the the, the, the world where people stopped uh, caring. Um yep. whenever we're in like a Walmart or whatever, I will go find a mirror and I'll be like, Ray, come look at this. This is amazing. Come here, come here, come here. And like I'll like like call for him until like I will not stop doing that like that kid level. Like, yeah. come on, come on, come on. Until he'll like walk over and I'll be like, look at this. You, you got to see this. This thing's amazing. This thing's amazing. And as soon as he is in the mirror, I'll go, ah, you ruined it. And then walk away. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird that I'm on my second marriage. I don't know. Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> there's two types of dicks in this world. So yeah. It, there's two types of dicks. Is that what yeah, you said? There's two Chris? types, Richard. There's there's dicks like yourself who's on a second marriage. There's dicks like me who is in his mid thirties and still hasn't gotten his first. Mm. <laughs> I will say that as someone who has at this point in my life slept with well over three thousand people, there are more than two types of dicks in the world. I was gonna say <laughs> yes. we were probably talking to the expert on how many types of dicks. I'll say, uh, <laughs> bend to the left, bend to the uh, no, um <laughs> I will tell you I don't know if you'll be proud of me or what. I don't know if you'll feel anything from this. But when I went on my coworker trip, uh, while I was with some coworkers, I was on the West Coast for a little bit. I told them all about the sex clubs and how awesome they were. And, oh, neat. Uh, yeah, nobody believed me. And so here I was, like, on a work trip, Googling sex clubs, showing them, you know, hey, this is the real spots, and you can go if you want. And I don't think they were interested, but now they know. So I share the little bit of information. Mike's on an HR list now. Just it's so all right. <laughs> Whatever they can find me. Whatever. Thank you for a helpful resource. That's, yeah, that's, helpful that's, resource. Exactly. Like, it's like work, work, work was a <laughs> so if um, HR is calling me, where was this again? Okay, and thirty six eighty eight Beverly Boulevard, Slammer is where you want it. Yeah, if you want you a nice and clean North Hollywood spa, um, yeah, much 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 better. But you know, you know, who wants to rub elbows with those folks? Yourself. Yeah, what the hell? So, so I, I don't know. This is actually an amazing transition to what I would love to talk to you about first. Yeah. Um, which is my first. No. Uh, <laughs> which was your last comic that we talked about last time you were on here. It was on Kickstarter, Octopus, mm-hmm. uh, which is in people's hands. People have read it. Myself, I read it and really enjoyed it. Uh, I guess to start that conversation, like, have, have you gotten any feedback from it? Have people been enjoying it? Have you gotten... People you know, told a lot you of you're feedback. quack or you know yeah. what's going on with that book right now. Well, I've had I've had I haven't had anyone say they don't like it yet, which is nice. Um, so either people are being very polite or it has a hundred percent hit rate so far. Mm. Um, we'll just go I, with that hundred percent. Yeah, that's rate. what I'm going to assume. I, I sort of I feel like I fucked up a little bit with like putting this next Kickstarter so soon because I was like, oh, everyone will have Octopus. They'll love me. They'll want to buy another book. What I forgot is that everyone actually is just like me and we all buy things on Kickstarter. They arrive, we put them in a pile and we get around to them at some point. And then when we see that that person has another Kickstarter, we go, yeah, but I already have one of their books and I haven't read it yet. So I will wait. So what I'm really hoping is that people will all read Octopus by, by Tuesday, May 30th and be like, shit, we need more of this Richard guy. And it's not going to be another memoir because actually people... A lot of people have been saying, you've got to write another memoir that was so good. I'm like, okay, but that was about some really bad shit that happened to me. So like, right, please yeah. stop wishing that for me. Let, let's let's just chill on the trauma. <laughs> trauma. I don't need that in my life right now. I, I, I'm gonna, I've, I've been kind of like sending the serial numbers off the story a little bit just because it's not really fair for me not to. But um, the book has ended one marriage. Wow. Okay. Um, a... a woman came and bought the book for me at a convention and uh we talked for a few minutes and she got like very um like very 
emotional, like just talking, she got emotional about it and like hearing what was in the story. And when I, like, by the time she bought the book, she was like hugging it to her chest. Like it was like this precious child she needed to have. And it's weirdly didn't buy the special edition, but whatever. Um, so she says, I'm going to read this tonight and I will tell you tomorrow what I think of it. And she thanked me and she shook my hand, which is really fucking just, it's, it's, it's sort of, it's like a real Mork from Orc moment. You know, like, I just don't know how humans do things. So I'm going to shake your hand to end a conversation. Um, but so she was like, she was, she was obviously affected by this, this, this interaction at least. So she comes back the next day. She's there like first thing in the morning, like two minutes into the convention opening. And she still got the book with her. And she says, I read this last night. I was like, thank you for reminding me what you bought. Cause otherwise I would have had no idea. Like, come on. <laughs> anyway. So she said, I read this last night. And she says, you've, you've done, you've done so many things. And I, I haven't. I wanted to, but I haven't. I always wanted to move to Australia. So this morning I bought a ticket to Australia and on Wednesday I'm going to fly to Australia. And tonight I'm telling my husband that I'm leaving him. Oh my God. Holy shit. <laughs> can, you, can you put that on like the uh, collector's edition later, like as a quote? <laughs> You know, everybody is like, yeah, Grant Morrison, two thumbs up. It's like, lady from convention, I'm leaving him and going to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to see. Holy shit. I mean, what do you say to that? Are you like, thanks? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I was like, no, oh, good. Australia's pretty good. I told her to like, <laughs> it's pretty uh, good. Beware the spiders. Are, like, you know, yeah. like, if you go to Perth, there's a lot of racism, but there's also an island filled with weird animals. So, you know, it's balanced. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a really great zine maker there who does Marge Simpson erotica, and I can never remember her name, and I always feel terrible. So, you know, Australia's got good stuff. The popsicles, Pete's icy poles. Holy shit. Yeah. Those are fucking amazing. I haven't heard about those. The night that I uh, the night that I stole the boat to try and kill myself, uh, when I when I got back, and the, this part's not an octopus, but I got when I got out of the boat, uh, I ended up getting in a fight with this homeless guy, um, which was not my fault. I maintain, um, and it didn't. It, well, so what happened was like understandable. I'm like I'm like walking um, like back from the river, and I'm walking like toward the street, and you have to kind of go underneath the train tracks. And this like homeless guy who's got like real like 1930s hobo energy to him, um, like comes and starts like asking me for money. I'm like, look, I've got nothing on me right now, and like my phone's dead. And I've had like a bad time. I just tried to kill myself stealing a boat. I didn't tell him that part, but you know, right, right. I think that kind of energy about me. And he he, I made I made like some some joke. I can't remember what it was, and it wasn't even like against him. And he like you know took it badly. And he shoved me against a wall and he was like, we're fighting now. I'm like, no, we're not. And then he like smacked my head into the wall and I was like, okay, this sucks. I don't, I don't want to be here. And so I like, I ended up like realizing that I actually had like cash in my wallet because I'd been at the convention. You know, he'd ask for change and like it's Australia. So you have like decent sized coins there. It wasn't like I was, yeah. you know, cheaping out on a dollar bill. But so the one thing I know about Melbourne is that um, heroin's very cheap. Um, and so I gave him like 50 bucks and I was like, here, go, your bu go buy yourself a lot of heroin. I'm going to leave. And so I walk away and I walk out into like what is now kind of becoming for at this point of the day, like a bit of a busy street. You know, I'm near a train station. It's early in the morning. And this guy chases me out from underneath the train tracks, like waving the $50 bill at me and, yet, and saying, you take this back. I'm not into that. I'm like, I do not look like the hero of this story. Oh my God. Um, but so I needed to cheer myself up. I, I he kept the fifty, by the way. Um, so I went and I went to a, a convenience store and I bought like ten of the. I can't remember if it's Pete's or Peter's, but whatever. Peter's icy poles, the lemonade flavor, and in Australia, lemonade just means like Sprite. Um, and man, those things are good. They're they're they they're the same. They're like a popsicle, but with a better texture. They're like a little bit softer, a little bit less sweet. Um, and they're identical to these these uh, popsicles that I had when I was a kid called Polar Pops, which I think really awakened a lot in me because the commercial for them was a cartoon polar bear licking this thing. And, uh, yep. Yeah. Sorry. And the best, was, no, the best foods are shaped like dicks too. That's what I was going to say that too. The popsicles. Hot dogs. Cucumbers. Yeah. Yeah. 
there's there's it's hard to be like a solid hoagie. I don't know. But what I want to get back to is when the when the hobo was saying we're fighting now. Did you you didn't want to like counter with like I'm winning the fight now to get him to stop? <laughs> like, oh, yes, you think it was like a like blue bottle with his typewriter? Like I can just say <laughs> what's going to happen in the way. Yeah, you can say it. It's like okay, yeah, he'll just leave you alone. Um, you just yell fatality, they'll run away. Yeah, fatality. <laughs> <laughs> Fireball. Um, that's. That's I don't I don't know what that is, but um, with that being said, Octopus was well received. <laughs> yeah, people uh, didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll say, I so I, I read it, and um, I also read horror shorts, which I also would love to ask you about that moving forward too. But just wrote a sequel. That answers my question there because I really, I really like horror shorts, and I, I thought it was a cool little thing you did there, and I would love to see more of it. Is what I was going to say, but I read Octopus, and I'm obviously not the target audience for Octopus, but after reading it, really enjoyed it. I mean, down to just how you laid the book out, it almost feels like I'm reading as if you just sent me like photo scans of your your book, like, Hey, what do you think of this? That's how it mm-hmm. kind of was laid out. And I liked that because it, it looked like pages that were on a, on a artist board and everything. And the way it goes, I just fell in love with every page from your very sweet, tender moments with friends to these like very, I don't want to say extreme, but like intense moments in these clubs. That's something that like is outside of my realm of life. You've never had a sea captain stick three fingers up your ass? Um, not recently. It's been a few years. Uh, <laughs> I'm a much more. Uh... I'll tell you that's that's one big reaction to octopus is everyone remembers that panel where the sea captain yeah. says to me, "Let's see if you can still think about work when you have three of my fingers up your ass." And every every straight guy who is who has talked to me about this has been like. Like whoa, that's a lot. I, like that's such a that's such a huge thing, and I'm like, it's just that in real life it was four fingers, and I cut it down for the book. Like it's probably the biggest change I made <laughs> in the book from reality, and I really thought about it for a long time. So what's like, funny there, Richard, is I've only experienced this once where somebody stuck something in that crevice, and I remember immediately being like, oh, I do not like this. <laughs> not, like. not for you. Not for you. That's all right. No, I think the thing that stuck out to me that I'd love to ask you about is uh, you have one sequence in there where you're a young, a young kid and the other kids find this like this porn magazine, you know, like the typical like we found it in the I think it was in the woods, right? Or was it, no, the, it was in his, in his dad's bedroom drawer in his dad's bedroom. And then you go look for it in your dad's bedroom. And it's very graphic. Like in that that sequence is very explicit and graphic in what you show. And then the rest of the book, even when you're in sex clubs with other men, you tone it down a bit. Was that on purpose or that's kind of happened by accident? I think that like my interaction with the porn in that, like in that moment was, it felt like a moment of sexual aggression. Like, and I think that like, you know, there's a lot of pornography out there that is incredibly mm-hmm. aggressive and oh, yeah. um, designed to be. Um, yeah. And though, like, those boys were horrible to me. Mm. Uh, and the, like, like the, I, wanted, I wanted to really, like, capture the, like, that moment as being, like, this is about, these, these are people who are enjoying something for the sake of being graphic. This is mm-hmm. people who are enjoying um, the violence of porn. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because the kind of like, like I'm very open about the sex I have, obviously. Yeah. Um, and sex clubs, I think get like viewed as being like really filthy and really perverted and what have you. And they are, and they can certainly be, but everything there is so incredibly consensual and so excitingly welcoming. Yeah. Um, and it's that same, like there's a through line in the book of like, dirt bags with kindness, you know, like Jim is a big sleazy dirt bag, but also the kindest person I've ever known. Um, and like, I wanted to make it clear that like, this was sex, but this wasn't an introduction to some kind of nice sex. This was, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, like 
people are always talking to me about like how extreme octopus is and how much it shows. I'm like, there are two dicks in the entire book. <laughs> Um, one of them is, is that, and like, even then it's just like the base of the shaft going into that woman's mouth. Yeah. Um, and like the other one is just like a dick friendly, you know, a friendly dick poking up or as I'm turning into an octopus at the end of chapter one. Um, I think there's like one bare ass in the rest of the story. Mm-hmm. Everything else is, is, uh, you know, it's, but people remember it as being like quite a sexual book and quite an extreme book in the same way that people keep assuming that haunted Hill is going to be like an extreme book. Now haunted Hill has one nude cover, but mm-hmm. like literally there's actually no nudity in haunted Hill, even though it's like a far more adult story. And- it's funny. I would love to talk. I mean, we're obviously going to talk more about haunted Hill, but it's funny. Cause for me, even that, I think it's the last chapter. It could be the second, to last chapter where you're in the sex club and the guy is, I mean, throughout the entire sequence, it's obvious that you guys are having sex while you're talking, but like, it's also, you don't show anything. Like it's very, it's almost a tender moment between two people. Just if it wasn't a sex club, it would have just been two people in bed lying down talking, you know? Mm -hmm. And I found that interesting that you took these, these sequences that most people, probably myself included with my biases would think of as like an extreme sexual moment and kind of brought them down to what was probably reality for you. And uh, the one very explicit moment was that, like that porn magazine. And like you said, it's more of like what it meant to you, right? If there's an yeah. aggressive, like you said, the typical connotation of sex clubs is like this aggressive thing and it's not safe and whatever. And yeah. as, as for what happened to you at a young age with the magazine, you're like, this was, way too much for me so it was what i'm saying is it was interesting as an outsider looking in to see your perspective of it and that's what really made me fall in love with the book and really enjoy it thanks yeah 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 the uh and i i don't think you'll be moving to australia anytime soon but uh (laughs) And uh, I want to say I'd love this, to cause, visit, but cause Chris, Chris opened up and was like, I'm not the target audience, but then he said he loved the book. Right. So I'm like, to, to my question I, is who would you prefer someone that loved the book or someone that left their husband to go to Australia? <laughs> like, I don't, I, what do you, what? <laughs> honestly, I think, I think like the truth is I was, I was talking to a friend of mine about this yesterday. Um, and this friend, he is, I think Chris, he's like you, he's, he's not the target audience for most of my work. But he genuinely loves my work, like Haunted Hill. He he said he actually he, he he read Haunted Hill a while back, all of it, and he read like all twelve issues in a day, you know. And he's always asking me when there's going to be more and what have you. Um, and he read Octopus, and he reached out to me to say that like Octopus is the best comic he's ever read. And then he followed that up with he likes Haunted Hill more, but he can tell that Octopus is better. And like. I was talking to him about this last night because we were talking about someone else's comic that is uh, not genreless but almost genreless and far more of a like meandering exploration of feelings, what have you. And he was like, "I don't, I don't want to read that comic. It looks, it just looks terrible to me." And I was like, "I'm actually really excited about that comic," um, which is weird because the, the person who's made it, I don't like anything else they've done. Um, and I said to him, he, he was, and he started like talking about how like comics need to have all these certain things and what have you. And that, that's why he doesn't like this one. And I said to him, uh, you realize that comic is really close to the comics that I do. The difference here is that, you know, me. And so you have been charmed enough by me that when you've read the comic, you haven't been looking for something else. I think that people really like put themselves into a box by saying like, what are the kind of comics that I'm going to like? What is the kind of whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and I think, it's the same reason that I think people rewatch the same movies over and over again, the more access they have to other movies. It's because when we had to go to a video store and look for something, we read the back of video covers and like figured out what would be interesting to us based on how it was, they're trying to sell it to us. Now we scroll through an endless list of things and we're like, I don't know. I don't know anything about any of these things. I'm terrified of spoilers for some fucking reason. Spoilers are amazing and everyone should enjoy them. Um, (laughs) And so instead you just watch, you know, whatever, whatever film you watched when you were 12 years old over and over again on a loop. Yep. So I, I think, I think the truth is that I'm sure there are people out there who won't like octopus. I'm not going to claim that mm-hmm. I appeal to everyone, but I think that I appeal to a much broader audience than I will ever reach. 
I I discuss it all the time where I, as any person, uh, you end up in your boxes and like, this is, this is what I like and this is what I am, blah, blah. And then around, you know, late twenties, early thirties started to venture outside of those. So like, for instance, just to give a very like minor example of this, like I wasn't a fantasy guy. And like Lord of the Rings, like never hit with me. I wasn't, I could care less about people walking for uh, 90 and nine hours. But when I discovered like barbarian comics, like Conan the Barbarian and um, Barbaric and, and like a bunch of other different in that genre, I was like, oh, I do like fantasy. I just like this version of fantasy. Mm-hmm. And then you know, other things along the way too. And I don't know. Maybe that's from doing the show. Maybe that's wisdom with age. Who knows? But I have discovered that while I may not be the target audience for things, and I understand that I'm not the target audience for things, and that's okay, I still enjoy things outside of what I think I like. Yeah. No. And and I'll say octopus is on my pile of stuff that I need to read still. Yeah, Mike just hates you, so he didn't read it. No, I don't hate you. I, <laughs> I literally told scary. Chris, I'm like, I have a fucking pile, and I'm I'm a piece of shit. I have a piece of shit, which is separate to me having a pile of comics that I need to read. But I am gonna I am gonna back your next Kickstarter, so that's not you don't have to worry about that. Just because that's all. I like you, what you need to yeah. do is you need to show true allyship to the the gay yep. creators, and you need to buy the sexy variant cover. Oh my god! That's yeah. how you can make right. it, it. It's only seven dollars more, and you'll get twenty nine dicks. So <laughs> that's I. So as someone who's never purchased dicks for money, I feel like that's a really good deal. That's a lot <laughs> of dicks for uh, seven bucks. Come on! So dicks for money is the name of my next book. <laughs> so next, we should so. really get into haunted hill. But like, so you're doing you're doing a quote unquote sexy variant, and I've talked a lot. Maybe not on this show, but just in cheesecake, general. Cheesecake covers. Yeah. Cheesecake covers do not, as a, as a straight man, usually cheesecake covers are thought of as like big breasted women and all that. They do nothing for me, mostly because A, if I like, I mean, I could see breasts in real life if I want to, but also like I have I'm Google. Aware. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you like A, is the. The 29 dick variant, is this on purpose to kind of make fun of cheesecakes or yeah. what is the purpose of it? Like, yeah, yeah. No, it is like I'm, I'm that childish. Um, I love it. And that's I what else yeah. Cause I think cheesecake is stupid personally. Before but. I was going to, before I launched octopus, I was going to do haunted hill as my first Kickstarter. Um, mm-hmm. Cause you know, it, it, like it had a decent audience online, et cetera, et cetera. It all, it made sense. Um, and everyone was telling me, you have to do a sexy variant. You have to do something with tits on the cover. And I'm like, okay, but this is a book about like a kind of like a, a grumpy 35 year old lesbian who's calling out dudes on their bullshit. Like, I feel like it'd be quite disingenuous for me to draw her with her tits out for your amusement. Right. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the secondary part of that, that like sexy variants by and large are, and by the way, I have no problem with sexy variants. Mm-hmm. I, I have a problem with lazy cover design. So if I see a sexy variant that is, here's a regular version of something, you know, girl yeah. with sword. And here's the sexy version, girl with sword, clothes removed, same pose. Right. Like, yeah, I hate that. Yeah. Like, um, and then when I was doing Octopus, people were like, do a sexy variant. I'm like, there's literally no way. And they're like, no, just, you've got to have tits on your cover. I'm like, okay. So what is it going to be like? Like it's a strip club with some sexy ladies in the foreground and in between two of them, you can see me in the back corner drawing comics. Like eat my yeah. ass. Yeah. So, right. Um, because in Haunted Hill, Eva works as the, as the janitor, daytime janitor at, at the sex club. Um, I thought I can do a sexy variant that, that is like embracing that. So it's her on her hands and knees scrubbing the floor earbuds in completely oblivious to what's going on around her just like being left alone to do her fucking job while a massive gay orgy is going on there's people getting fit <laughs> in a swing there's a guy with a giant dildo up his ass someone's like poppers out of some bars you know there's there's people on like in tiered seating eating each other's assholes there's fingers and butts there's dicks everywhere and like there's a lot of dicks either dripping cum or shooting cum the cum is landing on the title of the book Oh my God! Yes, it's Sold. everything. Yeah, um, yeah. Chris, the the Chris version is always there for uh, 
Chris is there for a cum joke, so he's like, hell yeah, I'm by. <laughs> by the way, the, the cum all has a spot UV treatment, so it's shinier than anything else on the cover. I wanted to get glow in the dark, but it was just too expensive. Oh my um, God. If you could make the cum... The cum- <laughs> It's something I never thought I'd say in the show. If you can make the cum like a chromium variant, <laughs> not only would I probably do that, but it'd be hilarious. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. You know, it's, it's like, um, it, it really, it's, what I really enjoy about it is that there are, and I, I keep saying 29, but I, 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 I think there's 29 if you get the, if there's the full version with the uh, French flaps, which I didn't end up printing. So let me just count how many dicks are actually visible. Two, three, four, five, six. This is good podcasting here, everybody. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, counting out. Dicks, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, it's no, only it's silent hard. because he's counting dicks. There's oh, only oh. there's only eighteen dicks on the front. Oh my god! It's a wrap around. It's a wrap around. Wow, um, I love it. But yeah, what is on that dick? dick? What is Can on we that? discuss what is like wrapped around that dick right now? Oh, it's a it's just a ball separator and a cock ring kind of yeah, come on, one, Chris. Like a leather studded one. Listen, I'm and then a there's very... a your ball stretcher on the one above. There you go. Do we not understand that I live in a very redneck area and just a straight guy? Yeah, like I'm not yeah, experiencing yeah. these things. A like builder right in this guy's ass who's crawling off into the foreground. We have. I mean, that's like a Friday. Poppers. That's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's the there's the poppers. There's the poppers. Now, this time I've called them hog bait because I didn't want to get in trouble with the pig sweat people. I've got like one guy in a puppy <laughs> outfit with a vass in the air, but I also have like a nice couple just kissing and holding each other. You know? It's, yeah. Yeah. It's about having everything. And and it's very wholesome. Nobody is bothering Eva. All of these men, like there are, there are eighteen dicks there, and none of them are bothering Eva. No one is getting in her way. No one is shooting cum in her direction. They are just letting her do her fucking job. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's an amazing cover, by the way. Seeing that, I love it. I love it. <laughs> everyone you might could take it off YouTube off. for that cover, but it's it's. Awesome. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Every time I say that um, I've done like a sexy cover, people assume that I'm talking about the uh, the the donut getting fisted. I'm like, no, that's, oh, that's yeah. the same one. Yeah, that's, that's cover that. A. Yeah, that's the main cover. So what's funny? I so I did a a book years a couple years back that I'd love to bring back eventually, but that was called Battle Monsters, and it has a lot of like it actually got like some people that were into furries into it because there was a lot of like. Humanoid. humanized like yeah. animals in it mm-hmm. and i thought because now the big thing on kickstarter is cheesecake covers and i was like well if i did a cheesecake cover like furry covers would be the hilarious thing to do right <laughs> so to see you do this i'm like that that just kind of makes me feel like i should do it even more just to kind of slap against this whole cheesecake trend come on i, I feel it. like no one's gonna want this thing like yeah <laughs> I, mean, I i know that i've made this for my own amusement i've made a hundred of them um it is it is going to be a special limited thing and that's fine but like what's been nice is i've, I've put it out on social media since i did it i actually that when the the day that the day i the day i launched it on uh twitter was actually the day that carboria 2 came out so i feel like again just killing it at marketing <laughs> um oh hell yeah um but uh, <laughs> since putting it out i've actually i've been approached to do like sexy variants for a couple of other people so I'm like I'm actually getting to do um, I won't say what it's for yet because it hasn't been announced, but let's just say I'm being paid money to draw Grandpa Monster's erection. I love that. This sounds like a Charlie Stickney joint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because of that H's come as like white ash. Yeah. <laughs> That's love, where you you make the connection. love you, Charlie. <laughs> I, oh I shared God. a I shared a table with him at, at the LA Festival of Books a few weeks ago. Oh, and really? It was great. Like I've known Charlie for years, and Charlie's one of my favorite people because he met me in a professional capacity at a party that I had been told was a costume party and certainly wasn't. <laughs> So, like, he was just there being, like, a normal, fully grown adult, and I was dressed as the Hamburglar. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> oh, my God. And, like, by the way, I had brought, like, a bag of hamburgers with me. Like, I was, like, I was in it, you know? And um, he still took me seriously and has still had multiple conversations with me and then was like, yes, let, let us share a table. We will be in a tent together all weekend at this big outdoor thing in a fucking heat wave. <laughs> 
selling oh our books god. side by side. Oh my um, god. And the number of times that weekend when I would say something that I thought was normal and he would just look at me like, well, I just learned another new word. <laughs> oh, man. As somebody that loves that man to death and loves talking to him, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. My, my chiropractor the other day listened to an interview with me. <laughs> oh, boy. And when I came in to get my like shoulder fixed, he was like, hey, uh, What's a succatorium? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. And if you go back and listen to our last episode, folks, you will find out what a succatorium is. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's that uh, that should be like the name of a new metal band, by the way. <laughs> succatorium. So Mike, you play guitar. Like we can yeah, make this happen. Yeah, make happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And the first song will be um that's a what how much money is for 27 dicks or something like that <laughs> no the, the first song will be money called Gucci floors if we're going to talk about the last time it's on this show there you go yeah that oh yeah oh yeah i love that so, uh i feel yeah. like almost 40 minutes in um we should we, probably talk we'll about talk about it uh, we'll, haunted we'll talk. Hill. so yeah. <laughs> so now Richard, we're getting what is this book we're getting a collected edition right this is what yes. we got Yes. Yeah. So this this is a book that I it was formerly available online um, mm-hmm. as a as a it was a weekly uh, web comic six pages a week uh, about a woman named Eva who is a sloppy thirty five year old dirtbag who moves back to Hollywood because her wife gets a really good job and so now she is uh, going through something a lot of us have been through moving back to her hometown but her hometown happens to be Los Angeles. Um, it is a surrealist soap opera about the most impossible place on earth. It is all told in pseudo real time where uh, the six issues that are collected in this book cover about two hours of her life. And the current goal is to tell a 312 issue story across an 11 day period of Eva's existence. I, I can't wait to read it. Um, I have I have not read any of the issues yet, so I'm I'm very excited for it. I figure uh, if I if I can do 312 issues, that'll be 52 volumes, and then I can uh, pull them all from the market and then release one volume a week and be like, "Hey, DC's 52. Can you do this? Yeah, can you do this? You son of a. I bitch. was going to make a DC joke, but he yeah. beat me to it. Yep, he did. That's all right. Yeah, you went quiet because you were doing the math, right? <laughs> Yeah, he was like, well, as soon as I heard 52, I'm like, DC, how can I make fun of DC? It's a low hanging fruit at this point. We actually did it when, when DC were doing the weekly thing for their first 50, their first go at the 52 thing. um, Theo and I, who's a a former collaborator of mine, um, one of my few former collaborators who I'm still very good friends with. uh, He, because I'm a monster apparently. Um, no, if you've read Octopus, you understand why I have some issues with former collaborators. But Theo and I did, uh, we decided, like, well, DC probably has, like, a bunch of people working on this. What if we did it just us? And so we put out, we couldn't do as much content as them, so we did an eight-page mini-comic each week on top of our regular output uh, for one year. And so we called it Richard and Theo's Funny Books, and it was 52 mini-comics. Uh, and then I think between us, we put out 28 other books that same year. <laughs> Not all of those 52 were good, but man, there were some cool ideas. That's insane. I mean, kudos to getting it done either way. That's crazy. That's insane. That's a lot so of content. And you're yeah. going, so you previously released this on your website. I remember that in one of our previous interviews, we talked about this book. Yes. So everybody can go back to that to hear more about it, even more about it. But now you're going to Kickstarter with it. What are you offering with the Kickstarter that's going to, other than just a print edition of this, that's going to entice people? Um, so you get the usual exciting backup stuff that you get in a, in a trade collection. Um, some Actually, the first strip or a single, it's a single panel cartoon that kind of inspired the whole thing. Uh, a character who isn't Eva, but is calling a dude out on his bullshit or like actually he's trying to call her out on something and she's just staring at him with hatred. Um, Mm -hmm. That inspired the whole thing that I've never published anywhere else. 
uh, early designs, cover breakdowns, you know, a bunch of stuff about the about the development of the book, uh, as well as the fact that it's just a really nice physical book. I am incredibly obsessed with getting the right paper stock for everything, getting the right quality for everything to be. Um, so, you know, in, in that sense, the, at the basic level, you get a really fucking nice book. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also doing an expanded digital edition, which will come with the seventh issue, which isn't available. Uh, and then, you know, the, the, the print of, um, of Sasha taking a shit behind the Hollywood sign because I'm classy. Uh, nice. And, <laughs> nice. Um, again, while Eva smokes in the foreground, disinterested by what's happening. I really wanted to capture like the tone of Hollywood. Um, and then the, I mean, there's those sketch covers and obviously the sexy variant cover and, and all of that. But then uh, I think that people should have access to pieces of things if they want them. And I am interested in the idea of like finding a way to make digital art low class. Oh, sorry. Original art, not digital art. Jesus. Digital yeah. art all low class. We know that. Um, yeah. you know, making original <laughs> art low class. So uh, this book is all done uh, pencils on on shitty paper, and then I use a light box to do the inks. So I have every page of this in pencil form as well, with all of the text, with everything, and with all of my mistakes and changes. And uh, there are a hundred pages of that will be available. So for fifty bucks, the book is twenty eight bucks on its own. Or for fifty bucks, you can get the book with a page of the original pencils folded up and jammed right inside there. I love that. That's phenomenal. Um, there's also, yeah. uh, you know, various add-ons and special things. And I've got, uh, Eva has a great t-shirt that she wears throughout this that just says spit on it. So I've got a good, a good sticker that just says spit. that looks like it's from her shirt. And because of the donut getting fisted on the cover of the, of the main book, I have done a delightful donut sticker that just says, put your fingers in my hole. Nice. I love and that. I'm sick of Kickstarter stickers being so small. These are like big stick on grandma's coffin type of stickers, you know? Yeah. Cause I, that's exactly what I was thinking at the funeral. Yeah. Slap it on there like a bumper sticker on our way to hell. So you got all these cool little things that you can get along with the Kickstarter. Do you, I mean, what the last Kickstarter did the horror shorts add on, you mentioned yes. earlier doing horror shorts too. Is that a part of this Kickstarter or is that, that a future one, thing? That's a future thing. Um, the nightmare theater people reached out to me asking me to do a new story for volume three. And uh, originally the, the, the pizza, the pizza, God, what am I saying? The corn story uh, about the guy taking a shit while eating corn. That's in horror shorts. Um, that was originally story. done for nightmare theater volume one. And I've been thinking for a long time, like, how could I do a thematic follow-up to that? And I've done a story for volume three of Nightmare Theater, which will then be put into horror shorts issue two, along with a handful of other short pieces I've done, um, which will come out either late this year or early next year. Uh, it's, but this story is called Tracked, and it's about a girl who uh, orders dominoes because she's, like, alone and feeling bad about herself and no one's there to judge. So she orders Domino's and watches the pizza tracker app as it gets to her. And then after she eats the pizza, she sees that the tracker is still active on her laptop. And it says that it's now inside Claire. Uh, and it's about her following the, the journey until she shits out the pizza. What the hell? That's amazing. <laughs> That's like the most fucked up Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> I've never watched. <laughs> I don't know what philosophical thing I'm supposed to feel or understand from that episode, but yeah. Oh my God. Uh, never ordering Domino's again, by the way, but I mean, yeah. good choice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a uh... Mike, you live in New York. What are you doing? ordering Domino's? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah I'm, I'm in New York. This is, it's clearly the worst pizza. Dude, this is awesome. I can't wait, especially what you said, digital deluxe, because as a digital only reader right now, um, it's nice to know that I'm getting a little something extra too, because I don't think enough people do that. So, uh, I, and I will be, that. uh, with, with, uh, octopus, I did the digital bundle of, yep. you know, other older stuff and everything, uh, that will also be available again with a couple of new things. And I'll be doing a digital edition of too hot for octopus, which was the follow up to octopus. That's all the handwritten journal style. 
I love the way that your camera has has changed you now to look like you're in witness protection. By the way, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I'm like messing with my lights and stuff. I think it's because it was it was a sunny day like an hour ago, and now we're transitioning. So I'm trying to like mess around. Okay, I look a little better now. I like I like move back a little bit, and I looks like I'm being interrogated. But now here we go. Yeah. <laughs> At first, it was just an outline, like an Unsolved Mysteries interview where they don't want to show the person's face, right? Yeah. No, it's cool. Oh, here I am. Um, yeah. no, I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm, I'm feeling weird about this campaign, to be honest. Like, one, it's it's my second campaign, so obviously I'm going to get the, like, slump where my friends and family say, ah, oh, we, we don't want to keep supporting you. Um, <laughs> but I feel like it's not going to be as hard a fall for me because very few of my friends and family bought the last book. Oh, well, there that's, you go. That's the comfort. Yeah. Um, you I have actually, a fan base. I went to New Zealand. Uh, I went to New Zealand and Australia uh, recently. And while I was in New Zealand, I, I actually hand delivered almost every copy of Octopus that people had bought from me um, because I had them to do that with. Uh, <laughs> and my mother saw that I had it. And she just says, I don't want to read that. I was like, I didn't bring it for you. She's like, okay. Good. Okay, good. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, she's just terrified that she's in it. And I was like, no. Uh, what it's, interesting yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about you. <laughs> uh, Richard, I can't wait, man. Uh, when this, I mean, as people are listening now, the, the Kickstarter has started. So, yes. By the way, uh, the, the link is kickrichard.com. I love that. So, so go, go there and you will find Haunted Hill and all of the weird shit that goes along with it. Um, there's a bunch of stuff happening with Haunted Hill at the moment that I'm not allowed to talk about, as in I've signed pieces of paper to say I'm not allowed to talk about them. Mm. Uh, and of course, it's because it's it's Hollywood, things might all fall apart and nothing will happen. But it, it, mm. it feels really weird to be like, I'm going to spend the next month of my life talking about Haunted Hill probably every day. And I'm also not allowed to talk about Haunted Hill. <laughs> it's going to be a Peacock original. Yes, exactly. That's what that's 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 what's <laughs> happening. Um, no, Nickelodeon's just going in a really different direction. <laughs> the the color of the splat is changing from. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So. So people, I mean, people are going to go out. They're going to check out the campaign. Obviously, we got all the different tiers you mentioned before. I'm sure you're going to have add-ons as well. So people will pick up octopus, other things like what, what are kind of add-ons are you doing? Um, so there's octopus, there's horror shorts. There's too hot for octopus. Um, there is, uh, the stickers. Um, there are special editions of the book. So as I said, the sexy cover, the sketch cover, I'm doing $75 sketch covers. Mm -hmm. Um, nice. I think in the campaign, I say like, I will draw, whatever you want. Like I can do a character from haunted Hill, but if you haven't read it yet and you just really want a picture of like grimace making out with Batman, I can also do that. I um, do actually want that. I know Mike's kidding now. Yeah. Thanks for <laughs> uh, and then I'm, I'm looking into things. I, I, I did the fake bottles of poppers for octopus and they were just a nightmare to ship. Um, and I'm not going to do those again but I will probably be announcing some stretch goal stuff along the way, you know, fingers crossed that we get there. Um, I want to do, because of like, because of having every page in the like separate pencils, um, I want to release a version of, of issue one, which is called Haunted Hills, Haunted Hill pencils first. And it'll just be the, the pencil edition of it as a single issue. Um, if cool. things go absolutely buck wild, I'm looking at doing, uh, individual issues as well as the collected volume. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that's a thing for more for later on. Um, obviously I'll be doing, you know, volume two, three, four, up to 52, assuming that I don't yes. die. And um, I have just started on my new book. So the new book will be launching on Kickstarter in August or September, I think. And so there's, there's a possibility that I might also be doing a first issue or a first chapter as a single issue of that book uh, as an add on late in the game with this. And that's, that's my book, the ex-wives of Frankenstein, um, which is about 
uh, the Bride of Frankenstein and Elizabeth Frankenstein spending the day together when they find out that their ex-husbands have been found frozen in the Arctic, locked in a super gay embrace, and are returning to the city as gay science heroes. And I'm very excited about that. I've just been Sounds watching awesome. the, opening, the opening sequence, the cold open, which I've had in my head for about five years, where the Bride of Frankenstein is working as a webcam girl, um, you know, beautiful, perfect, built for the desires of a monster, but also green and covered in stitching. Yeah. So, oh my God. You know, Mike, when you hear something, you didn't know you wanted it. Yeah. But now, it. like, you can't wait. You cannot wait. <laughs> there it is. That's like it. the discussions of like, oh yeah, no, 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 I don't like using a giant novelty bolt as a dildo, but it's what the fans <laughs> want them at. Oh um, my I just God. thought of that right now. I don't think I'm going to put that in the book. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be my sketch variant. Yes, please. <laughs> but weirdly, you still want Grimace. Yeah, I do. No, Mike yeah. wants Grimace. I want everyone Grimace. wants. That'll Grimace. be my sketch. Everyone, who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I actually, man. I just shout out to one of my favorite artists, Hey Weirdo, spelled with two E's in Weirdo, um, who just did a. Uh, I just got a T-shirt from from them of uh, sexy Grimace with with nice titties covered with suspenders and, and, and fries instead of pubic hair. Oh my God. I did. That's amazing. Thoroughly recommend. <laughs> this was, Hey, weirdo. He's going to book that bookmark that real quick. For himself. Yeah. Let's see everybody. Chris, Chris needs that in his life. And <laughs> I mean, like how, how do you haven't worn the t-shirt yet? I was going to say, what kind of reactions do you get when you, you wear actually, I public. have worn it. I wore it uh, actually to my chiropractor who learned the word sacatorium, and he took a photograph of it to send to his friends. So, okay. so that's no, the seems, best reaction you want. Seems to be going. I I feel like I'm just, you know, it's like I got so well known as the guy who really enjoys KFC, which is true. Um, but like now, my only way of branching out is I'm so my, my mind is so blocked by it. That I'm just like, what are other fast foods that I could also enjoy? Right. Instead yeah. of diversifying my, my taste, it's just diversifying what I eat and slowly expanding. When I found out, with like, do you remember last year some like manager at a McDonald's won some award or whatever and he's being interviewed? I can't remember if this was for QSR magazine or one of the others, but yeah. they're interviewing this McDonald's manager and they said, What's Grimace? And out of nowhere, he was like, Oh, he's a taste bud. And like, I guess that's canon now because some fucking McDonald's manager said so. But that means that like, Every time you've hugged a person in a grimace suit, they've been tasting you with their entire body. That's, I don't, I don't know how that makes me feel anymore. I don't <laughs> like know. He's, he's not a taste bud. Like he's not yeah. a taste bud. No, he's, he's not. He can't be. Yeah, that does that. That just breaks all the laws that I've thought. I don't so know. I don't think I'm bold enough to wear this man's art. But it's, it's a man. It's a woman. Um. Oh, oh woman, sorry. Um, first, he, she has a book called Coloring for Perverts, mm -hmm. which I find very interesting. Is that the one with the, the sexy Furby on the cover? There's two of them, and yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, there it is. That's, she does a that's... lot of... I have a, I have a, a, a picture of a, a sort of humanoid... Um, I think it's a chihuahua, just very uncomfortably showing her tits. And it's, I, I love it because it makes everyone uncomfortable to look at, but also uncomfortable because of how uncomfortable the chihuahua looks to be there. There's oh there's one of a woman sucking on the, what would you call the the bill of a dolphin? That's yep. very interesting. Yeah, the, is that the one it. where it's coming through a glory hole where the duct tape the whole thing? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of sexy cows fiddling with their udders. There's, um, there's some creatures just made of legs. Uh, there's some aliens fingering each other. There's a there's a lot of like cockroaches wearing strap-ons. This this cow in like sexy latex with a glass of milk. Yep, these are amazing. amazing. I'm just scrolling. Rhyme through. artwork. I listen. I'm a fan. Don't think I'm bold enough to wear the t-shirt. She also did a book called Pent Horse. Yeah, Pent -Horse. I see that. I love yeah, that really picture. Cool. That's awesome. I believe that's a shark. Uh, <laughs> you think with you multiple think dolphins with strap-ons around them? Why not? Why not? Only fins. The name oh, of the art is only, only fins. fins. I love it. 
I am. This is phenomenal. See, I'm just I'm introducing the world to great artists. Yep. Like yourself, though, the one we need to focus on today is you. So. Yes. Yes. Although yes. I will say that, like, uh, a do lot believe of that's people, two Furby scissoring. I, <laughs> I've, I've been a fan of her work for a long time. I actually I met her when I had uh, broken in backstage at an Amanda Palmer concert in 2009. Um, Amazing. But uh, she, I didn't know that she'd been doing this this type of art. Um, I'd, I'd like known her for writing stuff. Um, and then when I did the Haunted Hill cover with the horse coming out of the woman's mouth, um, she reached out to me to be like, we need to trade art because this is, this is in line with each other. And I was like, oh no, mine's not sexual. Mine's just about that book. The old woman who swallowed a fly. <laughs> it's, the, it's the grossest, grossest joke in Haunted Hill is when someone says, uh, someone was talking about what they like they'd left in their treehouse when they were a kid, and she says, "What did you need to get back from there? Your VHS copy of Old Women Who Swallow." Spoiler: She always dies when she gets to the horse. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! As a fan of dark humor, that's the darkest thing I've heard in a long fucking time, Richard. I don't think we. I don't think we can end the interview on anything else besides that. Like, no, that has, so uh, yeah. Richard. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, I'm the only Richard Fairgray in the entire world. So <laughs> richardfairgray.com, at richardfairgray on twitter.com. Uh, I'm occasionally on Facebook, but it's a horrible website, mostly for aunts and uncles at this point. It is. Um, correct. Although, oh, my God, by the way. So I joined this group called Gray-Haired Men. And I'm just like, I want to look at some sexy men, right? But it's like day one, men with gray hair posting pictures of themselves saying, hi, nice to be in the group. Day three, like pictures of men naked, like holding their dicks, but like just barely covering them so they don't get zucked, being like looking to get horny. And like, thank you so much, Internet, for like so quickly turning my feed into like not quite porn, but like as close as Facebook can get. Yeah, as close as you can get without getting zucked. Just, just delightful that that has happened uh, and so fast. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm on I'm in the gray haired man group. Um, <laughs> Um, if you, I God, I found out two days ago that likes on Twitter are public. So, oof. oh, um, yeah, I, did, yeah, I yeah. didn't know, and so I've just decided to lean into it, and I've just been like, yeah. Cooler Police Twitter account is getting a lot more likes this week. Yeah, um, good. So uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram as Richard Fairgray author because I lost the password to the Richard Fairgray account. Um, kickrichard.com for all of my crowdfunding stuff. It will always be the instant way to get to me. By Haunted Hill, it's it's like the weirdest fucking book I've done. It's the despite the fact that Octopus was a memoir, Haunted Hill is the most like me a book can be because it's 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 current and the first book is loosely based on a true story uh, that happened two nights before uh, the first lockdown hit, where I was walking home and someone said, "Hey, Mark," and I said, "Yeah," and I jumped in the car and they said, "You're not Mark," and I said, "That's absolutely true. What are we doing?" Um, it's it's great. It's fun. It's, 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 you know, I'm, I'm doing my sloppy dirt bag shit and I'm doing it well. In case everybody out there, kick is is hard to remember. You uh, can always look in the show notes down below. Wrong. It's kick richard.com. See, yeah. It's hard even for me. Kick richard.com. <laughs> uh, you will find links in the show notes down below to the Kickstarter and Richard's website. As always. So, Richard, thank you so much for being on the show. Appreciate you taking the time, my friend. I'll see you again soon. Oh, I hope so. Oh, 100% you will. Yeah, you will.